Hi. I've been asked a few times today for comments on the times tables tests. And normally I decline. I don't get involved in discussions on Twitter about the rights and wrongs of the tests or the rights and wrongs of learning tables. But I thought I'd set out my position. So first of all, where do I stand as a maths teacher? Multiplicative relationships underpin the most rich parts of maths. And so it stands then that learning the times tables must be a good facilitator of understanding those relationships. So my conclusion so far is that learning the tables, at least for school level maths, is going to be really useful. Anyone who's ever tried to teach anything to do with fractions or ratios or percentages or solving equations or anything much harder or more interesting will probably testify to the fact that the students in our room who know the tables make find life so much easier learning those new concepts than the ones who don't. However, that's not to say that we shouldn't get our pupils to understand the relationships and the things that glue the table facts together. Those things are really important and I'm conscious that now that Times Table Rockstars is in its eighth year, I can and we can be doing more to offer more resources and support to schools who are wanting to develop the conceptual understanding of the tables alongside the recall. So look out for more on that later this year. Okay, so my conclusion then now, as a maths teacher, is that learning the tables and having a conceptual understanding of them are both important. They simply go together. And anyone who says, down with tables, I'm only in favour of my students learning about the concepts, is probably doing just as a disservice as those teachers who are saying it's all about the recall of the tables and nothing else. Okay, well what about the tables themselves? Well, it's probably an established fact by now that schools and teachers, head teachers, will prioritise and deliver most on the things that they know their students are going to be tested on. But that discussion is for another time. So the test will undoubtedly focus state primary schools in teaching the tables to everybody up to year four. I'm going to assume that test or no test, year five students and above who know the tables off by, off by fart. Students from year five onwards who know the tables are going to find maths more straightforward as they go through their school life. However, there are some concerns with the tests, so I wanted to touch on some of those. The one that's raised most frequently is about the stress or anxiety that these tests might cause. And that, with testing, obviously, there's, there's, there's an element of possibility there. However, I'm lucky that I've had the chance to see the tests. And I'd like you to try and picture this. You're sat in front of a computer, you get asked a multiplication fact. You've got five seconds to answer it. If you don't answer it, you don't answer it. If you do, you do. Then there's a pause. Then you can start the next question. And you've got another five seconds to answer it. And so it goes on until you've done the required number of questions, which is either 20 or 25. I'm not quite sure at this stage. That's as onerous as it gets. If it lasts five minutes, I'd be surprised. It's very straightforward. It's multiplication only, and the question facts will be drawn from a pool up to 12 times 12. But really, that's the extent of the challenge that the students are facing. So existing rock star students who are a headliner or above, that's someone who can answer in four seconds or under, would absolutely walk one of these multiplication checks. And looking at the data set that we've got from rock stars, I can see that most year fours already, uh, and we're only part way through the year, um, are already headliner or above. So I would say things are looking pretty for those guys. So where does the stress come from? The stress often comes from teachers and parents projecting their own anxieties and stress about the tests onto the pupils. So my advice would be, in response to this announcement, don't suddenly go rushing out to parents saying, this is what we're doing to make sure that our students are prepared for the tables test, because all that will do is unnecessarily raise the stakes and prominence of the test. It doesn't need to be that way. Carry on doing the great things that you're doing to prepare those students to prepare all your students for learning the tables. Carry on doing those things that you normally do and make it just a normal part of your everyday life. When it comes to the test, guys, we're going to do this on the computer today.
no dramas. The pupils don't even need to know that they're being tested. So the second anxiety that, uh, that I've seen, uh, comments on Twitter and Facebook, what about the accountability for schools? Won't head teachers lose their jobs? Won't we just be hauled in by Ofsted? Or you know, ma questions or matters of that sort? Well, no. I know that in the, one of the early announcements three years ago or so, there was mention of something ridiculous like head teachers losing their job. That's gone, okay, along with many other things in the meantime. So forget that, no one's going to be losing their job. In terms of accountability, there are, no, there are not going to be any league tables. This is not going to concern Ofsted. This is so that you have your own data on a standardised test that's been, uh, that's been um, trialled with lots of schools and lots of pupils that you, know, you can have some faith in, hopefully, that however they perform on this test will give you a measure of how you're doing in terms of delivering on, on making sure that all the students know the tables up to 12 times 12 by the end of year four. So if you're not going to be held uh, to account externally, I think uh, a lot of head teachers can relax, a lot of teachers can relax, that it's kind of just business as usual. What about the fact that it could be a pain to administer? Well, again, it doesn't really look that onerous. The school office staff will be able to help make sure that the, the um, pupils on roll match the ones that are set up to do the test. Then there's probably going to be some code, some way of the children uh, making sure that they're on the right screen. Uh, and then they, they just sit and go through the screens. Um, it's not that tricky. I'm sure that as part of the trials, the government will be testing out um, what happens uh, where, where schools' internet connections are, are not the best. What happens if the internet connection goes down? You know, does that mean we have to restart it? I'm sure that the DfE and its, its testing arm uh, and the people who are, who are building the test and trialling it will be looking at eventualities like that and will also be considering how to reduce the administration burden of the tests. So again, like, let's wait for news on that. My best guess is that it's going to be pretty straightforward. Certainly no harder than getting your students into the classroom and actually logged onto the computers. And then the, the last anxiety I think I've seen is, is, well, is this test fit for everybody? And I guess you could ask that about every test. What about our SEN students? What about the ones who just simply can't seem to learn the tables and in fact are totally stuck on counting to 10, writing their name and number bonds to five? Well, yeah, I guess those guys have got a bigger problem than this test, um, but they're still going to have to give it their best shot because um, SEN students, all students alike, um, can learn the tables. You know, we're not saying that they can't. Uh, obviously, they struggle, and if they don't do as well as other students, they don't do as well as other students. I guess that's well, let's uh, yeah be honest about that. Okay, so they don't do so well, doesn't mean to say they shouldn't participate. Doesn't mean to say they shouldn't be attempting to learn them along the way. And, and I'm sure that's the same view that you take, that you're, that you're teaching uh, the tables and practicing with them regardless. Um, so again, I can't see that that's a, a major issue really. That's just, again, business as usual. So what about from Times Tables Rockstar's point of view? This is a... <laughs> I'm aware that some schools who haven't heard of rock stars might get recommended, okay, which is wonderful. It's always lovely and amazing to be recommended. Um, from my perspective, going back you know, sort of, yeah, as a teacher but also as rock stars, it would, be, it would be lovely, of course, if people were looking for something to help them with, with learning the tables, irrespective of whether there was a test. So I'm kind of... Yeah, there's a part of me that's, yeah, well, a big part of me, the main part of me, my main reaction to, to the test is, is, is drat in a way because I'm never really going to know whether schools have come to rock stars because they're afraid of the test and suddenly like now they're prioritising times tables or whether they were out there looking for something to help with tables regardless and I'd much rather it was the second of those two. Uh, so that's why it's, a, it's yeah, weird and, and, and tricky uh, for me to... I I'm, I'm certainly not like, happy about the tests from a commercial point of view. I, I don't care at all about that, that kind of stuff. 
Um, but what is good news is, I guess, it sharpens what I, what I want to what I want to be able to offer schools, which is more about the conceptual understanding, more about supporting schools with the tables. Like bearing in mind that this is something I've been thinking almost exclusively, well, not exclusively, but I've been thinking a lot about times tables for eight years now. Uh, I, I've I do have a view on how I how uh, my I would like my children to learn the tables. I can put it that way, uh, and therefore I want to be sharing more of that um, over the course of this year. Uh, we've got some some cool uh, some cool new features coming along, but also some really important resources for pre year twos, so for year ones and reception children, things that teachers can use in the classroom, things that are not about stopwatch or recall necessarily, but uh, more and more about the concepts, the relationships that will lead to uh, to fluency as well as greater understanding of, of the structures. Um, so anyway, all right, thank you for, uh, for listening to me on that last part. And well, if you've got this far, then well done. All right. Uh, okay, so that's, that's uh, yeah, that's it. That's a wrap. Thanks.